All praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over again. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek His help and assistance. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah leaves to stray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship and unconditional obedience except for Allah alone without any partner with Him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is Allah's servant and messenger. O oh Allah, raise his position and ranks more and more, and shower him with more blessings, along with his, his family members, his companions, and all those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. O oh Allah, make us among them, Ya Arham al -Rahimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urges us in the Holy Quran in many ayat to have taqwa. I urge you on myself to have taqwa of Allah ta'ala, to fulfill his commands, 
and avoid his prohibitions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, commanding us to know, to know the tawheed of Allah ta'ala. To know that there is none worthy of worship and unconditional obedience except for Allah alone. There is no true God except for Allah alone. As in this blessed ayah, chapter 47, ayah 19. This knowledge is one of the, of the types of the obligatory knowledge that are obligated on every Muslim. Every single Muslim must have this belief, the belief of Tawheed, the belief in the oneness of Allah Ta'ala as a certain belief, as a knowledge that has no doubt. So Fa'lam is from Ilm, and Ilm is knowledge. And knowledge in Islam, and here particularly in this context, is what is supported with evidence is knowing the reality with evidence. Knowing the reality as it is with evidence. That's ilm. And other than that, might be one, might be just assumption. No. In iman, in belief, there is no room for assumptions. There is no room for doubts. It must be conviction and it must be certainty. That cannot be shaken. And the scholars of Islam mentioned this and made it clear. Everyone whose belief and his tawheed is based on imitation and he's just copying his family or his community in a way that if they change, he will change with them, then that's not the tawheed that will be accepted. The tawheed must be certain in the heart that doesn't have any doubts. So that's the very first type of knowledge and that is that uh, knowledge of Allah Ta'ala is the very first obligation as the scholars of Ahl Sunnah say. أول واجب على المكلف معرفة الله تعالى That the very first obligation on you is to know Allah Ta'ala. To know Allah Ta'ala as He is. He is the creator. He is the, the maintainer. He is the sustainer. He is the one who controls everything. And He is the only one who deserves the worship. Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَأَوَّلْ وَاجِبٍ عَلَى الْمُكَلَّفِ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ فَعْرِفِي أَنْ يَعْرِفَ الْوَاجِبَ وَالْمُحَالَ مَعْ جَائِزٍ فِي حَقِّهِ تَعَالَى That you know what is obligatory uh, you know what is necessary, what is necessary for the Creator to have. There are necessary attributes that you must know about Allah Ta'ala and you must believe about Allah Ta'ala, such as His knowledge and His will and His life and His speech and His power. And you have to know what is impossible to apply to Allah Ta'ala. There are things that are impossible to be applied to Allah. You must know them. Right? This is the ABC of the belief of the aqidah of the Muslim. It's impossible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is heedless of something or uh, unaware of something or that uh, there's anything that sh uh, joins him in any of his attributes or in any of his actions. But you have to know these basics of your belief. You have to know that Allah is one in his essence in his actions and in his attributes. No one shares any attribute with Allah Ta'ala. If you believe someone shares with Allah Ta'ala any attribute, then that is called shirk. Then you are not truly believing in the oneness of Allah. You're believing there's a partner to Allah, even in one attribute. If you believe, for example, uh, someone knows everything other than Allah then that is a type of shirk associating partners with Allah. And this is not like a minor shirk, this is like a major shirk that will make 
the person who believed in it, eternal in the hellfire. So we have to be very careful. And alhamdulillah, Muslims have these beliefs, but sometimes there are some deviations that we have to be very careful about. And we have to learn. We have to learn, especially in this day and age where uh, doubts are everywhere. Doubts are everywhere. Uh, people of uh, atheism and people who follow the devil uh, and different types of people, they try to spread these misconceptions or these doubts or these questions onto the believers so they make them deviate. So the believer must have solid foundation and his faith must be based on conviction and understanding and proofs so that if he's exposed to those questions or those doubts, he knows well how to respond and also he can for himself, uh, can protect himself and also help others and protect others and save others. So the way of knowledge is very important. You have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one in his actions. No one can do anything in this universe except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the only true doer in this universe. Al-fa'al lima yurid subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and with this belief, subhanAllah, the, the, the belief in the oneness of Allah ta'ala, this is in itself, is a very huge topic. But briefly, when you have this true belief in the oneness of Allah ta'ala, you will have comfort. You will have tranquility. You will have tuma'nina. Because you know, it's only Allah Ta'ala who controls everything. It's only Allah Ta'ala who can harm you or benefit you. It's only Allah Ta'ala who can give you or deprive you. It's only Allah Ta'ala who can give you life or cause, it or cause death to you. No one else ever shares with Allah Ta'ala any of these actions. So this belief gives you tuma'nina, it gives you sakina, it gives you comfort in your life. With this belief, the believer doesn't have any like psychological diseases. The true believer who understands the tawheed of Allah Ta'ala should not have any type of hatred, any type of uh, uh, hopelessness, any type of... Uh, uh, giving up hope in, of, the, of this life and that's why you see that the percentage of people who commit suicide is the least in the Muslim countries because Muslims have a true belief in Allah Ta'ala true be they believe in the true oneness and Tawheed of Allah Ta'ala despite all of the trials and all of the wars and all of the disasters that afflict Muslims who have been for uh, decades under colonization or occupation or dictatorships and they're suffering all those types of, of uh, injustices in this world still you see the belief the Muslims have a strong belief in the Creator and in his decree may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us back to our religion so we go back to our glory to lead to lead the world through mercy and love and justice Seeking knowledge, and this is the first type of knowledge that the Muslim must seek and must learn. Seeking knowledge is, is something very sublime and very important. Allah Ta'ala in the Holy Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says in chapter 3, ayah 18, شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah has witnessed shahid Allah. That there is no God but Him. Allah has witnessed that there is no God but Him. And no la ilaha illa. Wal malaikatu, so do the angels. So the angels also bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Wa ulul ilm and the people of knowledge. That Allah is the only God. Qa'iman bil qist, He is the maintainer of justice. So Allah Ta'ala combined with His blessed name, the angels, and then who? The people of knowledge. 
شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العين So what a great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given to the people of knowledge. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those who know equal to those who don't? And in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who fear Allah from among His servants, are the knowledgeable ones, those who have knowledge. When you have true knowledge, you will truly fear Allah Ta'ala because you know who Allah Ta'ala is. And one more ayah in this regard, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives us a very nice example in Surah Al-Mulk, Ayah 22. أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبًّا عَلَى وَجْهِهِ أَهْدَى أَمَّنْ يَمْشِي سَوِيًّا عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ is the one who's like crawling face down. Crawling face down. Is he guided? Or the one who's walking upright and straight on a straight path? That's the example of those who have knowledge and those who don't. You must have knowledge so that your ibadah will be accepted. So that you work, you you live with a light. You don't you don't live and act through darkness. The Prophet ﷺ gave us many hadith to encourage us to have knowledge and to seek knowledge. He said, ﷺ, for example, من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين. Whoever Allah wants good for him, he will give him understanding in the religion. يُفَقِّهُ from fiqh. And fiqh is not only in that uh, uh, scholarly terminology which is now restricted to the rituals and the, the uh, ritual ibadat and acts of worship. No, fiqh means fahm, understanding of the religion. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you to learn the religion, understand the religion, this means Allah wants good for you. This means you're on the right path. And if you're not trying or learning or seeking to understand the religion, this means there's something wrong. Also, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith, لا حسد إلا في اثنتين. You should not envy Others except in two things. And this envy that's mentioned here means to wish what those two categories of people have. The first one, رَجُلٌ أَتَهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَسَلَّقَهُ عَلَى هَلَكَتِهِ فِي الْحَقِّ A person who was given wealth by Allah Ta'ala and he's using that wealth for the truth and to support the truth and in the way of the truth. وَرَجُلٌ أَتَهُ اللَّهُ الْحِكْمَةِ فَهُوَ يَقْضِي بِهَا وَيُعَلِّمُهَا And a person whom Allah gave wisdom. He's using it and judging with it and using it and living by it and teaching it. So these are the two categories of people you should envy. Means you should wish to get like them. You should aspire to, to have what they have. In this world, Allah, uh, in this world, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, taught us to look at people who are beneath us in the worldly affairs. You see, uh, you feel some poverty or you lack some stuff or some things. Okay, look at people be beneath you; they're more deprived. You're living in a house, well, and you own a house, a small house. Say, alhamdulillah, some people they're renting. You're renting a house? Say Alhamdulillah. Some people, they're living in tents and shelters. You're living in a shelter? Say Alhamdulillah. Some people are in the street, homeless. So, in, in the worldly affairs, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided us to look at people below us. So we appreciate the, the blessing that Allah has given us. While in the Akhirah affairs, in the knowledge affairs, the affairs of the Akhirah, the affairs of Ibadat, the affairs of the 
uh, Quran and knowledge. Look at those above you. Look at those above you. Look at those amazing Muslim brothers and sisters, women and men and children in Gaza, in, the, uh, in our beloved Palestine last week who gathered about 1,400 people, 1,400 people gathering in the Masajid. What for? Reciting the Holy Quran in one session from Fajr until Maghrib. This is the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the Ummah that will lead the world. And the day will come as our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us the glad tidings that this religion will prevail and justice will prevail through Muslims as they used to. These Muslim brothers and sisters who have been who have been under blockade and under siege by the Israeli Zionist occupation. They have been under siege for years, for years. In the biggest or the largest prison in the world, it's an open prison. In the most condensed and, and, and uh, populated piece of land in the whole world, those people of Gaza who are lacking the basic human needs and rights and the whole world turning a blind eye to them just to please the Zionist Israeli occupiers and thieves of the land. Look at those people with all of their circumstances and conditions. They are connected with their religion. Reciting the Holy Quran in one session. Fajr to Maghrib. Look at them. Some of them on a wheelchair. Some of them little ones. Eight years old. Eight year old boy. This is, this is Islam. This is, this is why Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. It's the religion of Allah Ta'ala. People mem mem memorize its book cover to cover. Even their children. So look at those people in these affairs. In the, in the Afira affairs, look at them. Don't look at those who are beneath you in the, in the field of knowledge. Our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the dua that he used to say every day في كل يوم من أيامه بعد صلاة الصبح بعد أن يسلم every day after Fajr prayer Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as narrated by the, in the hadith narrated by Imam Ibn Majah what would he say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا O oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge and pure and halal rizq, provision and sustenance and accepted deeds. Allahumma inna nasaluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbala Allahumma atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhaab al-nar Allahumma ja'alna min al-lazina yastami'una al-qawm fa yattami'una ahsan أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم استغفر الله لي. أرجع عن myself to ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى for forgiveness he is the most forgiving the most merciful. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلق والبشر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه ما اتصلت عين بنظر أو سمعت أذن بخبر I urge on myself to have taqwa of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Our beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم gave us a very beautiful comprehensive hadith that is full of encouragement for us to seek knowledge and to follow the, the path of knowledge. Imam Abu Dawood narrated from uh, Kathir bin Qais, he said, Kuntu Jarisa, through a chain of narrators, 
that goes back to Kathir bin Qais. He said, I was sitting with Abu Darda in the Masjid of Damascus. And a man came to him and said, O oh, Abu Darda, إني جئتك من مدينة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لحديث بلغني أنك تحدثه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. I came to you from the city of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for a hadith that I heard you narrating from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He came from Al Madin Al Munawwara, the illuminated city of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, which is today in what's called Saudi Arabia, all the way to the Masjid of Damascus, the Mosque of Damascus, in what is called today Syria. He came. Why? For a hadith. This distance, it needs weeks. Right? It takes weeks to, to go. The Prophet وسلم, from Mecca to al Madin al Munawwara on the way of Hijrah, it took him about a week, right? If you go to, you're gonna reach Syria, it will, it, you will need more than 10 days, you will need weeks. So, he said, I came just for a hadith. Ma I didn't come for any need. That Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, yes. فإني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying من سلك طريقا يطلب فيه علما سلك الله به طريقا من طرق الجنة Whoever takes a path of knowledge travels on a road in search of knowledge Allah will cause him to travel in one of the roads of paradise In another narration سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة With that way with that action which is seeking knowledge Allah will make the way to paradise easy for you and the angels will lower their wings in their great pleasure with the one who seeks knowledge as in the other narration that they they show rejoice and pleasure with the seeker of knowledge وَإِنَّ الْعَالِمَ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالْحِيْتَانُ فِي جَوْ فِي الْمَاءِ And that everything in the heavens and in the earth, including the, the, the fish in the water, will seek forgiveness for those who, who are knowledgeable, for the knowledgeable ones. وَإِنَّ فَضْلَ الْعَالِمِ عَلَى الْعَابِدِ كَفَضْلِ الْقَمَرِ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْكَوَاكِبِ And the preference and the status of the one who has knowledge over the one who is just a worshipper, a worshipper without knowledge. It's just like the preference and the status or the difference between the moon with its full in comparison to the other planets. And the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا تِرْهَمًا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ The prophets did not leave uh, dinaran وَلَا dirham means gold and silver. They did not leave gold and silver to be inherited. But they left knowledge. وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ Whoever takes it then he has taken an abundant portion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who take the path to seek knowledge. Especially, as we mentioned, there is an obligatory knowledge that every Muslim must learn in regard with his belief, his aqidah, the basic beliefs, in regard with his ibadat, the acts of worship, you must learn, every Muslim must learn. Wudu and Salah and Siyam and Hajj when you want to go to Hajj. What breaks my Wudu? What breaks my Salah? What is necessary? What is not? You must learn these things so that your ibad, you know your Ibadah. These are not things only for like students of knowledge or this is every single Muslim as the Prophet said in the authentic Hadith Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Talabul Ilmi Fariqatun Ala Kulli Muslim Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim. 
And that's the obligatory knowledge. And that's why the scholars of Islam of all of the four schools, they wrote books that gather that minimum necessary knowledge. And they include in it the sections on aqidah, on the belief, what is necessary to know in the belief, and in the rituals, the actions, the ibadat, and in the spiritual purification or what's called tasawwuf. In aqidah and fiqh and tasawwuf. Yes, that's how the scholars of Islam, and they wrote these books because of this hadith and the other hadith that show that there is a portion of knowledge that's mandatory in every Muslim to learn and necessary for every Muslim to learn and you're not excused if you don't learn it. You're not excused if you have been praying for 10 years without knowing, for example, that you have to face the Qibla. You're not excused. Unless you're living by yourself in the desert where you just became a Muslim and you never got access to knowledge, which is not the case for almost everybody here, right? So, and the scholars, they said, مَا لَا يُعْذَرُ الْمُسْلِمُ لِجَهْلِ One of the titles of those books, they say, what is, or the things that the Muslim is not excused if he's ignorant of, means it's necessary knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and help us to, to seek that obligatory knowledge and to make sure that we have it. And that part of that obligatory knowledge is, let's say, occasional knowledge. For example, I don't have to know all the rules of Hajj at this moment, but when I have the intention to go, I must sit and learn them so that my Hajj and my Ibadah is correct. If I'm a merchant, now I'm not a merchant. I don't have to learn all of the detailed rulings about buying and selling and all of the types of financial transactions. But if I am a merchant and that's my field and my job, I have to learn those rulings. It's mandatory on me so that I don't fall into haram, so that don't, I don't fall into riba or usury. I have to, to do that. That is the minimum knowledge that every Muslim has to learn, has to learn. And then above that, that is the way of the Prophet ﷺ and their inheritors that you, you, we are encouraged always to seek more knowledge so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us more and more. Allahumma ghafir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat, al muslimina wal muslimat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Innaka ya maulana sami'un qareebun mujibun lil da'wat. Oh Allah, forgive us, forgive all Muslims and believers, the men and the women, the dead and the living ones. Ya Rabbil Alameen, give speedy shifa and recovery to our loved ones who are sick. Ya Arham ar Rahimeen. O oh Allah, you are the one who turns the hearts over. Keep our hearts steadfast on your path, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, give support and protection to all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere. Ya Arham ar Rahimeen. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wa ghafir Allahumma lana wa li walidina wa li mashayikhina wa li ma'allamana wa li ma'rabbana. O Allah, forgive our parents, our sheikhs, and those who taught us and those who have rise upon us. وصلي على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين نقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله 